serving wine at your dinner parties. Evelyn Chick is here with the best food and wine pairing ideas. Evelyn, yes. how are you? Fantastic. Oh, good. I am so glad you're here. So glad to be here. You've always done cocktails, though, so we're doing into the wine territory. Absolutely. Yeah. So beverage expert also means sommelier, yeah. so I'm very excited to share with everyone the perfect little wine pairing tricks. Right on. For today. I love that. Okay, so but before we get into that, your recommendations, you, you kind of let, uh, sorry, you put our studio audience to the test. Wait, Guys, sorry. I'm really pumped about this one. We're really good. <laughs> We're gonna put our studio audience to the test and you're gonna let us know whether you think red or white pairs better with the food we're gonna talk about, okay? Everyone ready? I am. I'm so ready. Let's do this thing. Okay. Okay, perfect. So starting off, what do we got here? We got chocolate. Okay. And I feel like this is one of the most, like biggest misconceptions as to what wine mm -hmm. should be paired with chocolate. So we're gonna put it to the audience and see see what we all say here. What are we gonna, what, what, what are we saying here? Do we have like a consensus oh. for the first time ever? Okay, we're saying red wine. I'm going with everybody, red wine. Okay, so you're, everyone is kind of right. Yeah. Kind of yeah. right. Okay. <laughs> What I love about chocolate is that obviously there's different um, percentage of cocoa in yeah. it. If you want something like a milk chocolate, I would actually pair it with a beautiful port wine. Oh. So the reason why is because if you have red, like a dry red, mm -hmm. it actually takes away from the uh, sugar content um, of the chocolate. Yeah. And it actually hides all the really beautiful nuances. So what I usually do is texture for texture. Mm -hmm. So something with a little bit of um, aging to it, a nice late bottle vintage port. Totally. Um, that has like really beautiful berry notes and what it does, it complements the chocolate. It does doesn't kill, you know, the bitterness in it. It mm -hmm. kind of like gives a nice structure, nice tannin. Beautiful. So yeah, we're just gonna smell it. And when Ooh. you taste wine, you give it a whirl, all the aromatics are really come I out. I do feel fancy when okay, I do this. beautiful. <laughs> So I feel like you have that sweetness to balance out the sweetness of the chocolate, right? And if you that. if you do a dry red, everything that comes out is bitter. And we don't want that. No, 100%. Yes. It dries your mouth out too much. Exactly. And you want that creaminess. So how do you suggest we also taste? Does it take a bite, then a sip, or is it a sip, then a bite? You can do it either way. Okay. I would recommend maybe taking a sip, kind of letting it sit in mm -hmm. your tongue mm -hmm. for a little bit, and then a taste of the food. So mm -hmm. it complements each other. Right on. Yes. Okay, cool. So moving on, we're going from sweet into savory. We've got okay. some pork chops here. What do we think for pork chops, everybody? Oh. Oh, we got, okay, we got a couple reds. You don't look at, you don't have to look at your name. Right? Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> So again, we have a mixture of red and white. Mm -hmm. Everyone is kind of right. Oh, I like this. <laughs> yeah. So for a pork chop, I would actually uh, prefer mm -hmm. for myself, especially with something like an apple glaze, it really depends on the preparation. Mm -hmm. um, I would do a little Chablis, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah, so Chablis is actually Chardonnay, but it's done um, Northern Burgundy, so it's got a little bit more acidity to okay. it. And you know, pork chop has a little bit of fattiness, yeah. and sometimes when you're pairing it with like an apple glaze, something like that, it brings out such lovely notes of the pork, mm -hmm. the apple, and also of the wine. So the acidity cuts through the fat a bit. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a palate cleanser. If you like red, I would recommend a light red. Yeah, like something a, from the Burgundy region Definitely. As well. yes. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is a good oh, you day. Nose, you put in, oh, exactly. You start, so for, for any sort of like Chablis, I usually use a bulbous glass. Mm -hmm. Once you go in and smell it, you smell the apples, the citrus, a little bit of like stony, like yeah. salinity to it. It almost smells like a gala apple, like, like very yeah, apple exactly. juicy apple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is kind of taste that and then taste the pork chop and then oh, you know what? Be... It meshes so well together, the acidity cuts through the fat yeah. and now you don't feel like super full. No, it That's would great. play with the gaminess too because sometimes pork's a little on the yeah, kind of, you know, gamey absolutely. side. That's beautiful. There you go. All right, moving on fun. to a spicy uh -huh. curry dish. Okay. This is gonna stump some people, I feel <laughs> like. <laughs> what do we think, everybody? Everybody, let's go! Oh, we got okay. a mixture! Feeling it. We got so, loud reds. Right? Yeah. Okay, so this one is a bit tricky because curry, you think meat, right? Yes. And sometimes meat, we're like meat and red, makes sense. Mm -hmm. However, because there's so many beautiful aromatics, mm -hmm. I'm actually picking a, a dry Riesling. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> And the reason why is because um, Riesling's actually, if you're doing an off dry Riesling, it's got some sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. And when I'm pairing wine, I either love to compliment mm -hmm. or I do the yin yang factor. Okay. You know, something that's the complete opposite to mm -hmm. highlight those really beautiful, like coriander, mm -hmm. like allspice, like curry notes to it. Mm -hmm. So um, a Riesling actually helps, like kind of like a palate cleanser mm -hmm. again. It like brings out all the different spices of curry. So next time when you're having spicy food, try a crisp 
white, you'll be so pleasantly surprised. That sounds yeah. amazing. And this one, does this have a little bit of a fizz to it? Yeah, so this is actually Ooh. a wild ferment Riesling. Natural wine is all the rage right now. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of like lets the grape and lets the yeast do its own thing. It smells it. like lightly yeah. yeasty. Like there's yeah. a good little... Oh. You say that like I know what's going on. But yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's great. It's yeah. You hit those notes exactly. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but now when you think about having like a little bit of spicy food, you can see how it kind of will coat your palate a little bit. You know where I taste this and I feel like it would play with the spicy so nice is right back here. Right. Like it does a little bit of the like zip. Yes. Which would clear that spice. And you know what? On your tongue, this is where you taste acidity. When you're like, oh, that sour sucker right yeah. in the back. Yeah, that actually helps you like taste a lot of the other different elements of the dish or mm -hmm. the wine way better when you thought that's acidity right here. Yeah. And they're very, very back. Right on. It's, I, I usually describe how wine tastes based on where I taste it. Right, Like yeah. if it's jaw, I'm like, this is a jaw wine. Yeah, yeah. it's a jaw yeah. wine, yeah. High yeah. acid. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Okay, so now, I feel like this is also a tricky oh, one. Oh, it's a tricky one. The I love this one. final one. Okay. Fried chicken. Okay. I also love the idea that we're pairing fried chicken with wine. Why we got some reds? I feel like we've got some people also just being like, I like red wine. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. My mom is always, my, my mom is like that too. Yeah. She loves red yeah. wine. So for fried chicken, mm -hmm. we're actually picking something so out of the box, champagne. Oh my gosh. Oh. And it's pre-popped and everything. Okay, and you know what? Everyone is like, why are you opening a, 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 a nice expensive bottle of champagne for fried chicken? Yeah. I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> champagne as a traditional method has a lot of really those bready and buttery notes mm -hmm, to it. Mm -hmm. And if you pick something like a Blanc de Blanc, it's normally made with Chardonnay grapes. Mm -hmm. Not like the big oaky Californian Chardonnay, but something that's a little bit more finesse. And the bubbly, again, helps you open the palate. But because of the yeastiness, mm -hmm. it's almost like having bread <gasps> with your chicken. And the butter, thinking about a buttery biscuit with your fried chicken. Yeah. That's why we picked champagne. Okay. We are having this. <laughs> we are gonna, this is gonna happen. Mm. Mm. But can you imagine that kind of like cutting, texture? Yes. And cutting through the fattiness of that fried right. chicken. Right, exactly. Ooh, that's, and this is like a reasonable bottle too, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. so this is Nicholas Fulatze at the LCB. I believe it's under 70. Yeah. For a champagne from the, from, you know, champagne. Actual champagne. Actual champagne, yeah. not sparkling wine. So mm -hmm. it's a wonderful gifting idea paired with, you know, fried chicken that you can bring to a, someone's house if you don't feel like cooking holiday dinners. Honestly, <laughs> you bring a bottle, you bring a bucket, and you're good to go. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Evelyn, cheers to you. That cheers. was fantastic. Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.